Hey everybody. Uh, for those of you who have never seen me before, my name is Lucas. I am obviously not Andrew. Andrew is doing some other things today, so I'm taking his place. I am also a product evangelist here at Telstream. I work on slightly different products than Andrew works on. Uh, he does a lot of Wirecast stuff, but I have been here for a long time. I've used Wirecast for a long time. I know all about this product. So I am going to spend some time in Wirecast today, but then I'm also going to show you another product we make called ScreenFlow and how you can use ScreenFlow and Wirecast together. Uh, we'll get into that. We're going to go into some uh, stuff in Wirecast with image carousels. All that's going to be today. So it's great to be here with you guys. Hope you enjoy my presence, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a good show. See you in a second. And we're back. Um, so today we are really going to be focusing on two separate things. The first one being image carousels in Wirecast. That's something that uh, I've had a lot of experience with. I've worked a lot with another product that we have called Game Show, which is kind of Wirecast, but for game streaming. And we put that in there for uh, gamers at the very beginning, but now it's been transferred over into Wirecast. And there's a lot of different ways and a lot of fun ways to use it. So we're going to go over that. And then when that's done, we are going to shift over to a bit of a screen flow demo, some pre-show and some uh, pre-production and post-production ways to use screen flow um, with Wirecast. Just a quick disclaimer, though, screen flow is a Mac-only program. So when we get to that section, if you're not on a Mac and you never plan to be on a Mac, it's going to be a little tricky to uh, let you use it. But uh, I also want to let you know that I've got the comments over here. I see Paul Leary and Deb Dedrick and RV or TV. You guys are saying hello, welcome. I am here as well. And uh, yeah, I think that um, I lost my confidence monitor here, so I'm not really sure what I look like right now. But I am going to take a quick break to say that it's a really good time to subscribe to us. Um, both for ScreenFlow and for Wirecast, we have... Uh, a YouTube channel, we've got Facebook, we've got Twitter. Um, you can also talk to our support team at any time. You can uh, send an email to them. So go ahead and make sure to subscribe to all those for ScreenFlow and for Wirecast as well. And uh, remember that we also have notifications by email if you want to be notified anytime we go live. We've got uh, telestream.net slash Wirecast live and telestream.net slash ScreenFlow live. It's just a quick questionnaire, a little bit of information. Once you fill that out, we can send you an email and says, hey, we're live, doing cool things. Come check us out. Um, and then one other thing as well. Obviously, you guys know that we have a show every Thursday here, 2.30 for Wirecast. We do a show every Wednesday at 2.30 for ScreenFlow. Um, and that's what you're signing up for in that previous document. We are, for the next two months, we're doing it every week, but then we're probably going to go back to once a month. That's just the time that we have for the ScreenFlow Live. But don't worry, Wirecast will be here every week. And we also just released ScreenFlow 7. That's why I'm here. I want to show you guys ScreenFlow 7 and how you can use it with Wirecast. And in case we don't go over everything today, which we most definitely will not because there's a lot in ScreenFlow, we are having a webinar on August 17th, a week from today at 11 a.m. Pacific time, our West Coast time. And it's all about what's new in ScreenFlow 7. You can find out how to uh, sign up for that on our events page, telestream.net slash events. So you should be able to go there. And with that, it is time to do some real stuff. Let's get into it. Uh, please ask away, by the way, questions about me, about Wirecast, about ScreenFlow, whatever it might be. You can ask those questions, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. So if we can switch over to my desktop, I am here in Wirecast. Um, I assume that you guys... By the way, let me know. I, I don't watch every show that Andrew does, and if I'm, if I'm doing... Uh, oh, that is the wrong desktop. <laughs> if possible, they'd really I'd love to switch over to my uh, Wirecast desktop. Sorry, guys. When, when you bring in a new host, things get a little tricky, and uh, things are just a little bit out of order, but we're going to pull it all together here. Um... And uh, what's up, Trevor? 
Mirror them. Okay, hang on just one second, everybody. We're going to mirror this real quick. And that way, you're going to be able to see the desktop that I want to show you. Thanks for doing this kind of teaching. You're welcome, Paul. Uh, let me go back here and displays. And let's do the arrangement and mirror those displays. Perfect. And I'm going to leave this here in case I need to go back and see some questions. I will throw this down and pull this. All right. Now you guys should be able to see Wirecast. Sorry about that. Here we are. So the carousel, the image carousel, why would you want to use the image carousel? When I first started using the image carousel, I was working with a lot of Twitch streamers, people who stream live shows on twitch.tv, video gamers. And a lot of those video gamers are going to have um, sponsors. And depending on the kind of and streaming with Wirecast, you might have sponsors. Or you might want to show something on a rotating basis, whatever it might be. And an image carousel is a really good way of doing something like that. And it's super, super, super easy to use. Let me show you. You just click uh, plus here, just like any other source. And we come down and we choose image carousel. And that's going to pop up this little... Uh, uh, I don't know what you say, customization window or something. And you have some pretty basic controls, the width and the height. Shut down when not live. That's a new feature. Well, not a new feature anymore, but a feature that uh, when it's not in the live window, you're not using computer resources to generate the images and switch through them. We can change the background color. I like to never touch that because I really like having a transparent background. I think it looks much better when you don't have a block of color behind. Um, and then you can change the image every seven seconds and you can fade in and you can shuffle those images and this is where you add the images. Right now I'm not going to customize anything, I'm just going to click OK. And now we have an image carousel and there's nothing in it because I purposely made sure there was nothing in it. Actually I guess the, the default image carousel does come with a Wirecast logo. I think it may even switch between this one yeah, and another one. Um, but over here in the editing window I can come over to the source specific properties. That's this last one, the little circle with the three dots in it. And it, you know, it, it adjusts itself to whatever source that you're uh, highlighted. And right here we got the image carousel property. So I'm going to change this to my awesome carousel, just so I know which one I'm working with in case I create multiple. Um, and the width and the height, that, that's looking a little bit big. I like to maybe pull in a picture of somebody in the back. And, and often an image carousel is not going to be the main content, the main focus of your content in Wirecast. It can be. Don't get me wrong. If that's what you want to put and you're doing like a, a story section with lots of uh, pictures going through, you can make that real big. But I personally like to come over to the shot layer properties and drop the scale down real far and maybe put it kind of, you know, innocuously in the bottom corner. Because if I'm doing something like um, sponsors and I just want to cycle their logo through, I don't want them to dominate my entire piece of content. I just want it to be a little piece in the bottom left corner. And I'm going to periodically come over and make sure that I'm not missing any comments, by the way. So looks good right now. So once I get it the size that I want, which is very simple, uh, you just do that in the shot layer properties. I'm going to come back here, and this is where we can add images. So if I press this plus button, it's going to tell me, whoa, image file path does not exist. I never use file paths. If you know how to use them, if you know where to find them, and you want to use them, go ahead. But in reality, just clicking the button next to that, the, the little ellipses button, that's going to open up a finder window, uh, whether you're on a Mac or in um, PC, it's going to open up the ability to jump into your file system and find some images. So I'm going to use Mario. I'm going to click one. Boom. Look at that. Mario jumped right in. For now, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. But generally, I like to have them a little bit smaller and in the corner. So there's Mario. Tip of the hat to you, buddy. My favorite uh, video game character. Um, and when you see when I add it here, now I have this image as part of my carousel. I can delete it using this button. Or I can change the order of these images by pressing the button here. But at the moment, we only have one image, so I'm going to add a second image. I can click that exact same button again, open up my pictures, and as you can see, I was doing a lot of game show things. So I have here, here's another uh, 
Here's another nice video game image. A controller. And Mario is still here. But if we wait, oh, there we go. We got to transition every seven seconds. I'm going to change that transition to every three seconds. So we can just see it in action a little bit quicker. There we go. Switch to Mario a couple seconds later. Switch back to that controller. And it's going to continually switch back and forth until I either take it off the screen or tell it to do something else. And we have a fade in time of 0.5 seconds. If we change that, let's make our uh, changes every six seconds and have a fade in time of two seconds. So now we should see a slower change in the images and then a much slower fade between the two. And you can see the aspect ratios are different. And so they're going to adjust as they go between those. One more time. Boom, boom, boom. Perfect. So now I have two images, and I'm going to add a third because then we can really start changing things up. I'm actually going to add two more now. Let's do, uh, let's see, what kind of images am I working with? Here's a nice picture of an eagle. Great. You can see now I have three in here. It automatically starts going into my image carousel. And let's add one more. Here's uh, a... Yeah, let's go with my um, game show JPEG. So now I've got four images in my image carousel. And so game show first. Let's switch this back down to four seconds. I like that. And the 0.5 transition time was very good. So game show first, then the eagle, and then it's going to go to my controller, and then Mario. So that's a consistent schedule. It's going to continually switch between each one of these images for the entire time. Once I send it live, there you go. My viewers can see it, and it's going to never stop. Now, I can change the order. If I want, after the, uh, after the controller, I actually want the eagle, I can just switch it like that, using these arrows on the left-hand side. So now it's going to go to my controller, and then the eagle, and then Super Mario. And that's really the basics of how to set one up. Let me show you really fast, though, the background. If we change the background color, what's going to happen here? Oh, it's not, not letting me do that right now. You know, I never have actually changed the background color. What's going on here? Okay, guys. I don't know how to change the background color. <laughs> I, I generally wouldn't recommend doing it uh, because I like having the border because when you take it off and you make it small and put it, put it in the bottom corner, woo, that was way too small. It'll float nicely on top of your other content without having the issue of blocking off whatever's behind it. Uh, and then I realized there is one other thing that I forgot to show you, and that is if you have a ton of these images in here, or even just four, often shuffling the images is going to be really helpful because then you're not getting the same thing. It's very consistent, methodical, and plotting. When you shuffle the images, it'll change what comes next. So we've got Mario... And then we're going to switch to the controller. And then we're going to switch to the eagle. And then maybe game show after that. And it's just going to cycle through all of your images so you have that option. Now, images are not the only thing that you can add to these PNG format image. Yes, you can. Most definitely one. Absolutely. Um, so... Images are not the only thing that you can do. You can also add GIFs. Let's see if I have a, a nice and easy GIF here. Um, let's go to my desktop. Here's a GIF. Perfect. I just made this one real fast. That's a video of me. And look at that. It's a quick GIF. It goes right through, and it's just going to loop the whole time. I can make it small and you're good to go. What I would recommend doing here, if you have it down in the bottom corner, something that's cycling through during your, your live stream, having a super complicated video that you have small in the corner is generally not something that I would like to do. If you want to do it, you go ahead. Remember, everything I tell you on this is just my opinion. There's no right or wrong way to do any of this stuff. But uh, if I have this in the bottom corner, and then maybe I have... Um, let's add a, another... Uh, media file. Let's just get a video of maybe a human being. Let's just use a... Uh, there we go. 
So um, send that live. You can see that there I am. I was doing a quick camera test of the background. When you want the focus to be on this center area where somebody's moving around, and then you have a small video down in the bottom corner, it's going to be a little distracting. It's going to be hard to see. So if you're making GIFs, put an image there, but maybe just change the image a slight bit during it. Give it a subtle change as opposed to like another entire video that people are then watching picture in picture. It can get a little bit confusing. Um, let's pull this over. Let's turn off that real fast, make this a little bit bigger, and see what it looks like when we get multiple GIFs going at one time. So if I come back here to the source-specific properties for my image carousel, let's see if I can find another GIF. I'm pretty sure I have one on my desktop here. Um, screen Clow GIF. That was showing somebody. Webinar promo GIF. That one's good. So now I have two. So is it going to switch between the two? Mm, now I'm confused. Oh, there we go. Took a little second there. But now we have the second GIF coming through. And it's a lot longer than the first one. So let's see if I can change the fade in time. Let's change that to zero. And let's change it every 10 seconds or so. So if you have GIFs that are different lengths, it's going to take a little bit of guess and check. Make sure that all of these GIFs play through when you want them to. It might be better to have a GIF that is not as long so they can switch through a little bit easier. And this has been going for quite some time now. It should be changing pretty soon. Um, but the shorter the GIF, generally the easier. And then uh, the other GIF that I have here is a... Uh, ScreenFlow one, it's a lots of text going through, and it takes a long time for it to finish. So I would recommend having short GIFs with not a lot of movement, because that way it will be a lot easier for your audience to focus on something else. So if you guys have any questions about uh, using the carousel in Wirecast, please let me know now. Uh, and then, of course, you can continue to ask questions. But this is not a... This is not a very complex feature. It essentially allows you to put a, uh, what would you call it, like a slideshow of GIFs or images into your Wirecast document. Maybe use a little bug in the bottom corner, or if you want to do a quick commercial break and show your sponsors, you make it real big and cycle through. All you have to do is adjust your settings relatively click quickly. It's super easy to do. Change the time that it takes for them to switch, the fade in time, whether or not you want to shuffle them, and then choose the images or GIFs that you want to put in and send it live. Very simple, very easy to use, and quite awesome. I mean, consider trying to make a slideshow without this feature. You'd have to have maybe 15 different shots that you then send live independently, or maybe make a playlist of them and then adjust that. This way you bypass all of those steps and you've got a super sweet playlist built into uh, your image carousel. It's pretty easy. All right, I'm not seeing any questions at the moment. So we're going to move on to the second part here. By the way, Andrew sometimes goes for an hour. I'm not sure I'm going to be here for the whole hour. I do want to talk about ScreenFlow for a little bit um, and how you can use it in coordination with Wirecast. They don't actually mesh together, but they are complementary products that we use, that we both make here, and we have the same support teams. And so if you're using one or the other, you've got the same kind of people having your back like Andrew, like me, like our awesome support team. So um, let's move on to ScreenFlow. Let me show you really quick quick what ScreenFlow is and why it might be awesome to you. So I'm going to minimize this real fast. There's me talking to myself. RV or TV says, so I could use ScreenFlow and capture this broadcast right now and then went live with Wirecast. I would be broadcasting your show. That's exactly, exactly what you could do, yeah. I mean, I'd probably come after you with a copyright, uh, lawsuit because I no I'm just kidding. If you want to do that, you're more than welcome to. Um, but let me show you what ScreenFlow does. First of all, this is pretty ugly. I've got all of my desktop icons. What if I just hide my desktop icons? Number one super awesome feature in ScreenFlow. This little guy up here is the ScreenFlow helper icon, um, and you can hide your desktop icons to convince people that you're actually organized. 
which is pretty sweet. Um, but this is the logo for ScreenFlow right here. And I'm gonna, I have a couple uh, projects here that I'm going to show you. But first and foremost, I'm going to give you the quick breakdown of what ScreenFlow is. ScreenFlow is a screen recorder, a video editor, and a video encoder, an exporter, a sharer. So if I open up this, this uh, main menu here, here's the welcome screen. You can start a recording, and what ScreenFlow was originally built to do is record your screen. So whether you're watching this show right now, or you're watching a video on YouTube, or you're showing someone an app demo, um, if you've ever seen any videos that we made teaching you how to do something in Wirecast, those are all made with ScreenFlow. Um, and so I can choose to record my desktop, and I can choose to record my face cam. Hi, there I am, my face cam. And then any sort of external microphones and computer audio, very similar to Wirecast, where you can bring all of these sources in live. You can do that here in ScreenFlow too, but it's not going to be live. You're just making a recording. So I will do that. I'll do a quick recording here just to show you it's saying preparing to record. Uh, oh, I can't do it because I'm running Wirecast at the exact same time. Um, so I'm using, I'm using the same pieces of uh, audio drivers. So that is something that you will run into. You cannot be streaming with Wirecast and record with ScreenFlow at the same time. You can run ScreenFlow, but you can't be recording at the same time if you're doing stuff in Wirecast. So let's open up the configure recording real fast. Let's quit Wirecast. I'm not going to save that. And then we're going to do a quick recording. And then I'm going to open up Google Chrome, and you can see this. Uh, can you make a streaming with Facebook and YouTube with different quality at the same time? You mean with Wirecast? I assume you can. Hang on just one second. Let's close this again. Let's say stop record. And it's going to open up a brand new document in ScreenFlow. Look at that. There you go. You've got my camera. We've got my screen. And we're ready to go. I'm going to get back into this in just one second. I am going to open up Wirecast again. And see if I can answer that question. From Luis El Puma Rodriguez. The Puma. Awesome. Okay. So, Wirecast, where are you at? Right here. Let's open up an empty document. So, I have been using Game Show for a long time, which is similar to Wirecast, but not quite the same. So, if we go to Output and we go to Output Settings, Select an output destination. Let's say we want to go to YouTube. We say, okay. And here we want to come and configure it. Let's say we want to do 15,000 kbps, 1440, 60 frames per second, Apple H.264. Brutal. That's some high encoding settings. Yeah, there we go. But now we want to add a second one. Where was it that you wanted to go, Luis? Facebook. Ah, Facebook. Ah, Facebook. Okay, here's the answer to that. Yes, you can stream to multiple destinations using ScreenFlow or using Wirecast with different settings. The problem with Facebook is that they are very stringent. They're very strict on who can stream to them, and they do not like it when you stream from Wirecast to Facebook and another destination simultaneously. So technically, no, you can't do that. Um, Wirecast has the ability to stream to multiple destinations simultaneously at different encoding settings, yes. But when it comes to Facebook, no, unfortunately not. They don't like that, and they're not going to allow you to do that. Sorry, Luis. Sorry to, sorry to tell you. I wish I could change that. I wish, it wasn't, uh, I wish it was something that we could do, and then we could fix it real fast for you, but we just can't do that, unfortunately. All right, so back in ScreenFlow. Now we've recorded something, and now we can edit. I can grab my thing and move it up here. You see it's, it's relatively similar to what you'll see in uh, Wirecast. I can make things smaller, move them to the bottom corner. I can come down here and adjust the timing. I can split clips and make transitions. I'm not going to teach you guys how to do all these things. I just want to show you what is possible real fast. And so now I've changed all these things. Now I just have my screen recording down here. Obviously, this looks terrible, but I'm showing you that I, I can adjust things. And similar to what we have in Wirecast with this editing window with shot layers and properties, audio, chroma key, build in, build out, and your source properties, we have in ScreenFlow on the other side, video actions, audio actions, video motion. This one's pretty cool. Check this out. 
I can add a video motion action and drop this down. And now watch what happens. Oops, I forgot to add that I want it to be gravity effect. And now it bounces all the way down. So you can build things in ScreenFlow and export them and then use those as sources in Wirecast. So when we're thinking about ScreenFlow as a complementary tool to Wirecast, there's two ways. You can't use Wirecast and ScreenFlow simultaneously. They're going to be using the same audio drivers. It's not really something you want to be doing anyways. You want to devote your computer's resources to Wirecast so you can get the best stream that you possibly can. But pre-production and post-production are where ScreenFlow can really just slide right in and become a complementary product. So let's talk pre-production. What can we do before we start streaming with Wirecast in ScreenFlow to make our Wirecast streams that much better. Intros and outros, very easy to make in ScreenFlow. I have one here, the ScreenFlow logo stinger, this is what I call it. It's just a quick two second thing saying, hey, welcome to ScreenFlow. Boom, I made this in ScreenFlow. We actually have, uh, if you've ever seen any of our tutorials, uh, Wirecast tutorials, there is, um, let's see if I can go to my desktop and find my video projects and look at the Wirecast Flash intro. Open that with QuickTime real fast. Check this out. I made this in ScreenFlow for use in Wirecast streams or in Wirecast videos. Boom, easy. It's super simple, it's two seconds long, it's just a quick animation of the Wirecast logo. And if you want a super cool intro to all of your live streams, you can make these in ScreenFlow. I'm going to show you really quickly how I did this. I've got two different elements here. This is the ScreenFlow logo, and this part is the ScreenFlow word. So when I put them underneath each other, what it, I get is this. And these are nested clips. What that means is that if I double click on this, you can see that I've got multiple different elements here. And this is, if you've never used a nonlinear editor before, let me tell you really fast. It's similar to Wirecast in that you have your main canvas here in the middle. On the right-hand side, you have your editing panel. And on in Wirecast, that's in the left-hand side. And then down at the bottom, you have your layers. Whereas in Wirecast, your layers are individual shots. They don't have a, a beginning time and an end time because it's live me sitting in front of this camera, we don't know when it's going to end. It ends when we press the button. So they're individual shots that you can choose between, but they have this layering system. Very similar in ScreenFlow as well. Whatever you put on top in an upper layer will obscure what's below. So what I have here is multiple images. The first one, the second one, the third one, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And what that does is it slowly builds in each one of these elements of the ScreenFlow logo. So in here, in this nested clip, I put them all together and I gave them a short duration with a quick little overlap. And that's it. And then what I was able to do was nest that clip. And now that's this right here and you can see it. But now I added a video action. So what I can do is come over here to my editing tab, and, and whereas I can adjust the size, I can also add a video action, and at the end of it, I can adjust the size again, and ScreenFlow will animate that change for me, and it'll get a little bit bigger. And that's pretty cool. So what I've done is I've taken, if we go here to look what is in my project. This is like the media library. All I have here are seven different images that I put together. I nested that clip. I added an animation. I added a text box from over here in the text area just by clicking text box. I added a video action to that, which is just a slow fade in. And actually, I want this to be a little bit bigger. There you go, right there in the middle. And now I have this cool little two second intro. So now what I can do is I can come up here and export it, 
choose web high, customized. Let's put this on the desktop. I've got a really high bit rate. I can customize my bit rates in here. In the new screen flow, I can do automatic and choose fastest, normal, or slowest, whether I want it to go quick or not. Let's choose fastest, see how long it takes to export this two-second video. And I'm going to put it on my desktop. Export. Boom. Just like that, it's exported. It's ready to go. Now I can come back into Wirecast, and I can add this new media. So I'll look for my media file. Let's go to my desktop. Uh, let's choose this and sort by day modified. There's that MP4 and open it. And there you go. When I send it live, I now have an awesome little intro for all of my Wirecast. Let's say I was doing this, this today. Um, say I was doing this presentation through Wirecast right now on my computer, I could pull this in and this would be the intro to the show today. Hopefully that makes sense. That's, that's how you can make super easy intros. Now, another thing you can do is you can take that and you can turn it, instead of an MP4, you can export it as boom, 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 an animated GIF, which is what we were just talking about for use in those uh, image carousels. So now I can customize this animated GIF. I like that. Okay, cool. Let's change the size because I don't need it to be really big because I'm just going to put it in the bottom. And we're going to say ScreenFlow Logo Stinger GIF. Export. Done. Let's go back to Wirecast. Let's pull it in. Let's get rid of this one. I don't... Actually, you know we can just keep it there. I forgot you can just keep it. Now we're going to add an image carousel. And we're going to choose that brand new GIF that I just created with ScreenFlow because you can export GIFs in ScreenFlow and pull that in. And now we say, okay, so let's send that one live. Actually, let's go back here. Let's change the size of it to nice and small and down in the bottom. And underneath it, we're going to add a HD camera video. Oh, my camera. Yeah. It's, I've got this new Mac, this new MacBook, the newest one. And I don't know if any of you guys have it or have experience with it, but I have had terrible experiences with my FaceTime camera in this computer. I don't know what it is. I wish I had a better, a better uh, thought for you, but, I mean, it just looks bad, doesn't it? I don't know. Has issues going in and out and pulling in. Like, now I think I just lost it. Okay, there we go. Oh, there we go. We got it. All right. So now I have, and look how far behind it is, but now I've got my super awesome little ScreenFlow GIF in an image carousel going on in the bottom corner while my camera is there in the middle. So using ScreenFlow for pre-production, you can create all of these visual elements, whether they're GIFs or they're videos or even just an image. I mean, I'm not sure you need to do it in ScreenFlow with an image, but you can create all of these uh accoutrements, if you would, like little ways to spice up your Wirecast presentations by using external media. So that's some pre-production stuff. Let me take a quick sip of water here. Hang on. <sighs> Thank you. All right, let's see. Catch up here real fast. Uh... Am I seeing this right? This is awesome, says Paul Leary. Yes, it is. I agree completely. Um, can you import iMovie or Final Cut MP4s? Yeah, MP4s are fine. Um, it can't bring in every single video file in the whole world, but uh, you're you're fine with most of the the normal ones. Uh, how do I how do I see more? Oh, be quiet. Here we go. There's the rest of the comments. Why is this video so, so blurry? I'm not sure about that. Looks like they responded to you. Sorry, guys. I'm just catch catching up on some comments real fast. Hey, Luis, you can do sort of a workaround. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to say that. Um, okay, cool. Caught up. So let's move on from pre-production to post-production. How can I use ScreenFlow after I'm done? I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but in the past, and maybe you've experienced this, but 
live streaming is never perfect. Whether you drop drop frames or you are, you know, you your internet cuts out or there's a lightning storm which we've had in the past where it knocked out our internet. It's not always perfect, but if you want to keep that uh, presentation, that live stream that you did, you're going to want to record it. And we do that here all the time. Deborah Lee is uh, in that control room over there. I know she's recording this right now. Um, and let me bring up Wirecast again real fast. And uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Oh, she's recording right now. And what happens is anytime there's a flub, we can then take that recorded stream and we can pull it into Wirecast and make edits to it and then upload it to YouTube or upload it to Facebook, Vimeo, wherever it is that you want to do that. So let me go real fast. We're going to pull in this image carousel and my HD camera and we're going to set up a quick recording. Let's do record to disk MP4. Let's a, oops, cancel and say, okay. Um, let's do default 1080. That looks great. And we're going to send that just to my desktop and save it and say, OK. And then we're going to start recording. And we're going to do some goofy stuff, maybe sing like this. And then, achoo, oh, I sneezed. I don't want that in my final presentation. So we're going to stop that recording. We're going to close Wirecast. And we're going to open up a new ScreenFlow document. We're just going to come down to new document. You don't have to start with the screen recording and screen flow. You can just open up a new one. 60 frames per second, 1920 by 1080, 1080 HD. Open it up. This is an empty document. I can come over here to my media library and add a file to it. Today at 3.08 p.m. I created something. Let's open it. We can pull it into the timeline. And there you go. I've got this stream that I just made. Obviously, it was only 10 and a half seconds. But there's the dance. And then I sneezed. So I want to get rid of that sneeze. I can come in here, right there, trim it, get rid of that last little bit. And now I've taken my Wirecast presentation. I recorded and streamed simultaneously, but there were parts of that presentation that I didn't want my audience to see at the end. So I can pull it into ScreenFlow. I can make the necessary edits. When I'm done, I can come up to File, and I can publish directly to YouTube. I just come in here, and I add my YouTube credentials right here. Say, what's the title of this? It's Oogie Boogie and some of this stuff, and then publish. I'm not actually going to publish that because I don't want to. Uh, it's not a real piece of content. But I can cancel that. I can also publish to any of these other places. Vimeo, YouTube, Google Drive, Dropbox, Facebook, Wistia, Telestream, Cloud, Box.com, or Imgur. All of that is built in. You don't even have to export first and then upload. It just interfaces with these content delivery networks immediately and uploads your, your stream right there. So if you, if you get pretty adept at editing and there's only a couple things you want to take out, you can take that original live stream and stream it with Wirecast simultaneously record with Wirecast, grab that recorded file, drop it into ScreenFlow, edit it, take out all the mishaps and all the bloopers, or take out everything but the bloopers, because that's also cool, and then upload it directly to your destination of choice. So, pre-production, create content for your streams, GIFs, intros and outros, funny little videos that you want, things that don't need to be live, but could be a benefit for your presentation and then post-production once you're done with the stream take that stream pull it back into screen flow edit it to your liking and then upload it wherever you want it to go so screen flow just to give you a little bit of insight we just released screen flow 7 it has a whole bunch of cool new features i can reverse my clips make things go backwards it's hard to really see here because it's just you know me doing something we added a hotkey manager. You can now customize all of your hotkeys to exactly what you want them to be. We can. Uh, we have incredible export options. We use now Intel QuickSync hardware accelerated encoding for exporting, so it goes really, really quick. 60 frame per second editing timeline. Um, 
animations for text. This is pretty cool. Let me show you this real fast. This is something I've been working with lately. We'll just put something basic like Lucas is super awesome. You know, something super basic like that. Totally not biased in any way whatsoever. And we'll make it a lot bigger for the awesome part <laughs> just to emphasize that. Um, and then I can come in here and add a build in and a build out animation. So let's do typewriter and that's going to take two seconds and then fade in. And then we're going to do a break apart and that's going to take two seconds with a real crazy seating, huge distance, huge scale and fade out the characters. Now watch what happens to this text. It's going to typewriter in and then explode on out. So those are some of the new features in sc excuse me, ScreenFlow 7. Um, but I do believe that is all I was thinking about. Whoa, okay, okay, okay. I got a lot of questions here. Hang on a second, everybody. Zeke, Zeke McGeehan, uh, what is special about the Apple H.264 versus the standard H.264 recording output? Uh, do you, sorry, just just to double check, do you mean ScreenFlow or Wirecast? Please let me know. Lars, you mentioned technical network problems. Is there any trick I can keep the Wirecast recording going even though the live broadcast got di disconnected? Yeah, it should, Lars. Uh, that's the whole idea is that you recording it is a nice backup for any drops in network issues. Um, if you are recording and streaming at the same time and you lose your internet, you should be able to continue recording. It's something built into Wirecast. Um, all right, Zeke McGeehan. Sorry, Wirecast. Let's open it up and check it out. Output. Let's get rid of my smiling face because you don't need to see me 15 times. Um, and let's go to record to disk. And you were wondering about... Apple H.264 and Apple X.264. What is the difference between these two? Ugh. I got to tell you, I'd probably have to ask somebody else to get an answer that wouldn't make me shamed later. Um, maybe we can ask somebody in the chat that works here and they can tell us, um, because unfortunately, I don't feel qualified right now to answer that question. I'm sorry. I wish I did. But I don't want to say something that isn't true. Um, so let me get back to you on that one, Zeke. Uh, Joshua Mars says, I can't get audio out via my HDMI. It's a major issue for me. Please help. Joshua, that unfortunately is a very broad question. Um, it's going to depend on what kind of HDMI cable you have. It's going to depend on what it is plugged into and what it's plugged out to. It depends on how you're trying to pull audio through it. That would be um, cool. Thank you, Joshua. H.264 is better for Apple Mac, whereas X.264 might be better for other people. Um, but yeah, Joshua, back to your question about HDMI audio. It really is so dependent on all of the other factors in your workflow that it might be better just to uh, submit a support ticket with us. And then our support team can really get to the bottom of it. They can they can get all the information about you, what kind of hardware you're using, and uh, and see if it works out a little bit better when they have a little bit more information. So Joshua, please contact our support team. Um, yeah. All right, guys, that's really all I had set up for today. Bryce is here. Bryce, can I ask you a question? Bryce, come in here for a second. Bryce is uh, is a product manager for live streaming products. I got a question here. Okay. Um, let me go back to it real fast. Uh, the question was, oh, come on. Open this up. Make sure this is muted and say, uh, right here. What is special about the Apple H.264 versus the standard H.264 recording output? So with Put that on real oh, fast. All right. So the Apple H.264 setting on Mac OS is actually a link directly to their, their Apple Video Toolbox uh, API, essentially. 
And so what that does with Mac is they choose what's going to be the most efficient ecoder uh, from their perspective, right? Now, um, right now, that's usually QuickSync, right? But you're only allowed one QuickSync instance at a time. And if you were using that, then by default, it would normally fall back to H.264, which is not something you'd really want in Wirecast, right? You don't want it to fall back to a higher CPU usage encoder. So we specifically disallowed that. And so if you try to use it and you already have an encoder via the Apple H.264 uh, Video Toolbox um, API, it will alert you saying you can't do that, right? And you'll have to pick a different one. Now, what's kind of funny about the way Apple did that, right, with their video toolbox, which is also kind of neat, right, um, is that in the future, they could actually change that. And they could change that, say, if they had enabled AMD encoding with some of their AMD cards that are in the MacBook Pros um, or the, the Fire cards that are in the, the Mac Pro. Mm -hmm. um, and they could actually make it so when you select Apple H.264, it actually uses the AMD encoder instead of the QuickSync encoder, right? And they could do that whenever they want. So it's, it's a great hardware encoding solution, um, but it's not quite as straightforward and simple as on Windows where you just select, I want QuickSync, I want NVENC, I want X264. Um, but in general, it works very well. There's no um, accidental uh, situation where you're gonna end up using way more CPU usage than you intended. So if someone's choosing between one or the other, which one would you recommend? Between Apple H.264 and X.264? Yeah. Um, it depends on what you're doing, right? So um, if you really need to bring that CPU usage down, um, I would probably uh, go for the Apple H.264 for sure. Um, if you really want to make sure that your, the quality is really the highest it can possibly be, X.264 is still really hard to beat. And, and that's bit rate for bit rate, right? That's not necessarily saying that you can't get the same quality out of H.264, uh, but generally um, in the past, and you know, I haven't checked on it recently because they've been making lots of strides and improving that and narrowing that gap. Um, but in the past, it's always been, you generally have to up the bit rate of the quick sync or hardware encoding options uh, to be equivalent of a lower bit, weight, bit rate for X.264. Um, so in most cases, it's fine. But um, if you really need to make sure it's exactly what you want with really low bit rate, maybe you have a small um, uplink for your internet, your ISP, um, or the, the CDN that you're streaming to, right, might have some limitations. Twitch used to have some limitations where they didn't want anything above 3,500 uh, megabit or 3,500 kilobits per second. Yeah. So that might have been a, a situation where you would want to use X264 over. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. All right. Make sure to say thank you to Bryce because that was very informative and I'm glad that I asked him because I never would have been able to give you as good of an answer as he just gave you. So there you go, Zeke. Hopefully you heard that and uh, hopefully things are happy. All right, let's see. Yes, Zeke is happy. That makes me happy. Perfect. Your support staff is great. I agree completely. Um, you love Wirecast. Awesome. So do I. How much does it cost for ScreenFill? It looks like they answered you, but it is 129. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. I was. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, I'm such a noob to Wirecast Live. I don't really know how things go here, and so I was supposed to reference something, and I didn't know exactly what to reference. But now I understand. So yeah, ScreenFlow is $129. Remember, it is Mac only. So unfortunately, if you're on a PC, you're not going to have much luck with it because it just straight up won't work. So um, if you are interested in ScreenFlow for uh, post or pre-production and how it integrates with Wirecast, definitely check that out. Um, other than that, though, guys, I think I'm going to cut it here. It was great to be a guest host for you guys today. I know Andrew will be coming back. Uh, I just was going to step in here to let you guys know. I want to remind you that we do do a ScreenFlow uh, live show on Wednesdays, so you can tune into that on our ScreenFlow page. We also do uh, webinars. We've got one on the 17th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. What's new in ScreenFlow 7? We're going to go over all the new features, plus I love answering questions, so I'll be there to answer a ton of questions. Um, remember, subscribe, 
We would love your support on social media, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. Go there, check us out. I mean, you guys are clearly here already watching, but it'd be great to have you at all times. Um, and then we do want to thank our partners as well. That's something I was supposed to do. Say thank you to all of our partners who help us produce this show. We got a lot of equipment here, a lot of cool people that are super into streaming, make cool streaming equipment. And uh, let's see. Oh, let's see those drop those supporters. Yeah. Lars, support team is awesome. If you have issues, talk to them. They're going to help you out. But there you go. AJA, Magewell, Prompter People, Wowza, Skype, Black Magic, New Blue, Akron Amounts, and PTZ Optics. All super awesome people. So go check them out. We use all their stuff in our studio all the time. And remember, next week we will be back. It looks like... We're doing all about captions in Wirecast, what you need to know about captions, and then how to use them in Wirecast. Uh, that's not going to be me. That will be Andrew. He will be back next week. So with that, everyone, thank you so much for coming. My name is Lucas. Check out ScreenFlow. I do a lot of work with ScreenFlow. I love it. There's a ton of tutorials on our website. You can check it out. It's a pretty sweet piece of software for $129. So Thank you guys so much for having me here. I hope you had a great time. And Andrew will be back next week for more awesome Wirecast stuff. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.